Multiple births are common in many species of mammal around the world, but it would appear to be fairly rare in humans. However, it may not be as clear as it first appears. So what's actually going on in humans when they give birth to twins or even greater numbers of babies at the same time? Well, there are two types of twins which are the common form of multiple births in humans. These are monozygotic or dizygotic, with zygote meaning egg and mono meaning one or die two. So twins are either formed from a single egg or from two eggs. Monozygotic twins occur when a single egg is fertilised by a single sperm. The fertilised egg then grows, develops and undergoes cell division, at which stage the ball of cells is called a blastocyst. This blastocyst then during the first 12 days of pregnancy splits and now forms two nearly identical balls of cells. These cells, because they develop so close together, now share the same placenta, and this is how they develop, they will also generally be identical twins, or virtually have, and not completely have, identical DNA. If the split happens closer to 12 days, there's a higher likelihood of them not surviving, and if the split takes place after the 12th day, then the result is likely to be a conjoined twin. The split between the twins isn't completed, and twins share some organs as they develop. The occurrence of monozygotic twins appears to be uniform across the world, with no variation or difference between groups, populations, or whatever. The chances of having a monozygotic isn't inherited. It's either some random chance or some other normal factor, which we don't actually normally understand yet. This leaves us with dizygotic twins, which are the most common form of twin. This does vary around the globe, especially within families. This is because there is an inherited element to the likelihood of dizygotic twins, alongside factors like having a large fat store at the time of conception, or being older, or consuming foods like yam, which contain high levels of phytoestrogens. However, these factors only apply to the mother and not the father. This is because the cause of twins is that two eggs are released at or around the same time rather than the more usual one. Those eggs can then be fertilised even by two separate fathers if those circumstances are present. But either way, the twins are not likely to be any more identical than any other offspring, because the eggs are not actually packed close together, like in monozygotic twins, each twin has its own placenta. The other issue in twins in part relates to normal births, but it's more pronounced in multiple births. This is that there is a contest between the mother and the potential child during pregnancy. Because the mother in general can have more children later, it's in the mother's best interest, genetically speaking, only to provide the child with the minimum nutrients needed for the baby to survive. However, because it's the potential child's only chance to be born, it's in its best interest to extract maximum nutrition from the mother. This is why there can be erratic hormone levels in pregnant mothers. In twins, though, it's not just the mother they can battle with, it's also the other presence in the womb. And on rare occasions, this can result in something called chimera, where one twin is actually absorbed into the body of the dominant twin, which can result in the child having two different DNA profiles, or in the case of what's known as vanishing twin, where the twin is actually absorbed completely, with no genetic material remaining at all. This means that Although the birth twins are present only in about 1 in 67 births, earlier on in pregnancy, twins may represent as many as 1 in 10. So twins may not be as rare as we first thought.